some of the greatest assets any in the, anywhere in the world, uh, worth many, many billions of dollars. Uh, I started with a $1 million loan. I agree with that. It's a $1 million loan, but I built a phenomenal company. And if we could run our country the way I've run my company, we would have a country that you would be so proud of. You would even be proud of it. And frankly, uh, when you look at her real record, take a look at Syria, take a look at the migration, take a look at Libya, take a look at Iraq. She gave us ISIS because her and Obama created this huge vacuum. And a small group came out of that huge vacuum because when they we should have never been in Iraq, but once we were there, we should have never got out the way they wanted to get out. She gave us ISIS, as sure as you are sitting there. And what happened is now ISIS is in 32 countries. And now I listen how she's going to get rid of ISIS. She's going to get rid of nobody. All right. We're, we are going to get to foreign hotspots in a few moments. But the next segment is fitness to be president of the United States. Mr. Trump, at the last debate, you said your talk about grabbing women was just that talk and that you'd never actually done it and since then as we all know nine women have come forward and said that you either groped them or kissed them without their consent why would so many different women from so many different circumstances over so many different years why would they all in this last couple of weeks make up you deny this why would they all make up these stories and since this is a question for both of you Secretary Clinton, Mr. Trump says what your husband did and that you defended was even worse. Mr. Trump, you go first. Here. Well, first of all, those stories have been largely debunked. Uh, those people, I don't know those people. I have a feeling how they came. I believe it was her campaign that did it. Just like if you look at what came out today on the clips where I was wondering what happened with my rally in Chicago and other rallies where we had such violence. She's the one in Obama that caused the violence. They hired people, they paid them $1,500, and they're on tape saying, be violent, cause fights, do bad things. I would say the only way, because those stories are all totally false, I have to say that. And I didn't even apologize to my wife, who's sitting right here, because I didn't do anything. I didn't know any of these women, I didn't see these women. These women, the woman on the plane, the woman, I think they want either fame or her campaign did it. And I think it's her campaign. Because what I saw, what they did, which is a criminal act, by the way, where they're telling people to go out and start fistfights and start violence. And I'll tell you what, in particular in Chicago, people were hurt and people could have been killed in that riot. And that was now all on tape, started by her. I believe, Chris, that she got these people to step forward. If it wasn't, they get their 10 minutes of fame. But they were all totally, it was all fiction. It was lies and it was fiction. Well, Secretary Clinton. At, at the last debate, we heard Donald talking about what he uh, did to women. And after that, a number of women have come forward uh, saying that's exactly what he did to them. Now, what was his response? Well, he held a number of big rallies where he said that he could not possibly have done uh, those things to those women because they were not attractive enough for I, I did uh, not them say to that. be assaulted. I did not say that. In fact, he went on but to say... Her two, her two minutes, sir, her two minutes. But he, did he, not it, say it, that. It's he, her two minutes. He went on to say, uh, look at her. I don't think so. About another woman, he said, that wouldn't be my first choice. He attacked the woman reporter writing the story, called her disgusting, as he has called a number of women uh, during this campaign. You know, Donald thinks belittling women makes him bigger. He goes after their dignity, their self-worth, and I don't think there is a woman anywhere who doesn't know what that feels like. So we now know what Donald thinks and what he says and how he acts toward women. That's who Donald is. I think it's really up to all of us to demonstrate who we are and who our country is and to stand up and be very clear about what we expect from our next president, how we want to bring our country together, where we don't want to have the kind of pitting of people one against the other, 
where instead we celebrate our diversity, we lift people up, and we make our country even greater. America is great because America is good. And it really is up to all of us to make that true now and in the future, and particularly for our children and our grandchildren. Mr. Trump, nobody has more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Nobody has more respect. Please, everybody. And frankly, uh, those stories have been largely debunked. And I really want to just talk about something slightly different. She mentions this, which is all fiction, all fictionalized, probably or possibly started by her and her very sleazy campaign. But I will tell you, what isn't fictionalized are her emails where she destroyed 33,000 emails criminally, criminally, after getting a subpoena from the United States con Congress. What happened to the FBI? I don't know. We have a great general, four-star general, today, you read it in all the papers, going to potentially serve five years in jail for lying to the FBI. One lie. She's lied hundreds of times to the people, to Congress, and to the, to the FBI. He's going to probably go to jail. This is a four-star general. And she gets away with it, and she can run for the presidency of the United States? That's really what you should be talking about, not fiction, where somebody wants fame or where they come out of her crooked campaign. Secretary Clinton. Well, every time uh, Donald is pushed on something, which is obviously uncomfortable, like what these women are saying, um, he immediately goes to... Uh, denying responsibility. Uh, and it's not just about women. He never apologizes or says he's sorry for anything. So we know what he has said and what he's done to women. But he also went after a disabled reporter, mocked and mimicked him on Wrong. national television. He went after Mr. and Mrs. Khan, the parents of a young man who died serving our country, a gold star family because of their religion. He went after John McCain, a prisoner of war, said he prefers people who aren't captured. He went after a federal judge born in Indiana, but who Donald said couldn't be trusted to try the fraud and racketeering case against Trump University because his parents were Mexican. So it's not one thing. This is a pattern a pattern of divisiveness, of a very dark and in many ways dangerous vision of our country where he incites violence, where he applauds people who are pushing and pulling and punching at his rallies. That is not who America is. And I hope that no. as we move in the last yes. weeks of this campaign, more and more people will understand what's at stake in this election. It really does come down to what kind of country we are going to have. Folks, so sad when she talks about violence at my rallies and she caused the violence. But, it's but, on tape. The, during now, the, last the other things are false, but honestly, I'd love to talk about getting rid of ISIS and I'd love to talk about other things. Okay. But those other charges, as she knows, there, are false. In this, in this bucket about fitness to be president, there's been a lot of developments over the last 10 days since the last debate. I'd like to ask you about, about them. These are questions that the American people have. Secretary Clinton, during your 2009 Senate confirmation hearing, you promised to avoid even the appearance of a conflict of interest with your dealing with the Clinton Foundation while you were Secretary of State. But emails show that donors got special access to you. Those seeking grants for Haiti relief were considered separately from non-donors, and some of those donors got contract, government contracts, taxpayer money. Can you really say that you kept your pledge to that Senate committee? And why isn't what happened and what went on between you and the Clinton Foundation, why isn't it what Mr. Trump calls pay to play? Well, everything I did as Secretary of State was in furtherance of uh, uh, our country's interests and our values. The State Department has said that. I think that's been proven. But I am happy. In fact, I'm thrilled to talk about the Clinton Foundation because it is a world-renowned charity. And I am so proud of the work that it does. You know, I could talk for the rest of the debate. I know I don't have the time to do that. But just briefly, 
uh, the Clinton Foundation made it possible for 11 million people around the world with HIV AIDS to afford treatment and that's about half of all the people in the world who are getting treatment in partnership with the American uh, Health Association we have made environments in schools healthier Sec for kids Secretary including Clinton, healthier respect, lunches. Respectfully, this is, a, this is an open discussion. Well, it is an open I, discussion. I understand, and, and the specific you, question went to pay for play. Do you want to well, talk about that? Well, but look, there is no evidence, but there well is, there is a lot of evidence it's been very about well the very good work and, it's a and the high enterprise that and the and so many people like know Clinton it. Foundation it's a criminal enterprise. Uh, Saudi Arabia giving $25 million, Qatar, all of these countries. You talk about women and women's rights. So these are people that push gays off business, off buildings. These are people that kill women and treat women horribly, and yet you take their money. So I'd like to ask you right now, why don't you give back the money that you've taken from certain countries that treat certain groups of people so horribly. Why don't you give back the money? I think it would be a great gesture well, because she takes a tremendous amount of money and you take a look at the people of Haiti. I was in a little Haiti the other day in Florida and I want to tell you they hate the Clintons because what's happened in Haiti with the Clinton Foundation is a disgrace and you know it and they know it, and everybody knows Secretary it. Secretary Well, Clinton. very quickly, we um, at the Clinton Foundation spend 90 percent, 90 percent of all the money that uh, is donated on behalf of programs of people around the world and in our own country. I'm very proud of that. We have the highest rating from the watchdogs that uh, follow foundations. And I'd be happy to compare what we do with the Trump Foundation, which took money from other people and bought a six-foot portrait of Donald. I mean, who does that? Uh, it, it just was astonishing. But when it comes to Haiti, Haiti is the poorest country in our hemisphere. The earthquake and the hurricanes, it has devastated Haiti. Uh, Bill and I have been involved in trying to help Haiti for many years. The Clinton Foundation raised $30 million to help Haiti after the catastrophic uh, earthquake and all of the terrible problems the people there had. We've done things to help small businesses, agriculture, and so much else. And we're going to keep working to All help right. Haiti because it's an important I, part of the American I, I wanna, uh, They don't experience. want you to help them anymore. I'd like to mention one thing. Trump Foundation, small foundation. People contribute. I contribute. The money goes 100 percent. 100 percent goes to different charities, including a lot of military. I don't get anything. I don't buy boats. I don't buy planes. What happens was, is the money some goes the money, out. Wasn't some of the money used to settle your lawsuit, sir? No, it was. we put up the American flag, and that's it. They put up the American flag. We fought for the right in Palm Beach right, to put up the American there was a, flag. There was a penalty that was imposed by Palm Beach County, there and the was, money came there was, from your foundation. And by the way, the money, the money yourself, went sir. to Fisher House, where they build houses, the money that you're talking about, went to Fisher House where they build houses for veterans and disabled. I, I want to get into one But of course, there's no way we can know whether any of that is true because he hasn't released his tax returns. He is the first candidate ever to run for president in the last 40 plus years who has not released his tax returns. So everything he says about charity or anything else, uh, we can't uh, prove it. You can look at our tax returns. We've got them all out there. But what is really troubling uh, is that we learned in the last debate he has not paid a penny in federal income tax. And we were talking about immigrants a few minutes ago, Chris. You know, half of all immigrants, undocumented immigrants in our country, actually pay federal income tax. So we have undocumented immigrants in America who are paying more federal income tax than a billionaire. I, want I find so that let me just, just tell you very astonishing. Simply, we're entitled, because of the laws that people like her pass, to take massive amounts of depreciation and other charges, and we do it. And all of her donors, just about all of them, I know Buffett took hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, Soros, George Soros, took hundreds we, of millions we, of dollars. Let me just explain. We, we, All no, of her we, donors, we most of her donors, Mr. Trump, have done the same thing we, as I did. Okay. Well, and you know what you we, should have done? Folks, we heard and this you know, is, Hillary, what you should have done? You should have changed the law when you were a United States senator. If folks, you don't like we heard it. this. Yeah. Because your donors and your special interests are doing the same thing as I do, except even more so. Well, you, you should know, have changed the law, but you won't change I, the law because you take in so much money. I mean, I sat in my apartment today on a very beautiful hotel down the street, known as... Made with Chinese steel. But I will tell you, I sat there, 
I sat there watching ad after ad after ad, false ad, all paid for by your friends on Wall Street that gave so much money because they know you're going to protect them. And frankly, uh, you should have changed Mr. the laws. Trump, if you don't like what I did, you should have changed Mr. the laws. Mr. Trump, I want to ask you about one last question in, the, in this topic. You have been warning at re rallies recently that this election is rigged and that Hillary Clinton is in the process of trying to steal it from you. Your running mate, Governor Pence, pledged on Sunday that he and you, his words, will absolutely accept the result of this election. Today, your daughter Ivanka said the same thing. I want to ask you here on the stage tonight, do you make the same commitment that you will absolutely, sir, that you will absolutely accept the result of this election? I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now. I'll look at it at the time. What I've seen, what I've seen is so bad. First of all, the media is so dishonest and so corrupt, and the pile-on is so amazing. And the New York Times actually wrote an article about it that they don't even care. It's so dishonest, and they've poisoned the minds of the voters. But unfortunately for them, I think the voters are seeing through it. I think they're going to see through it. We'll find out on November 8th, but I think they're going to see but, through but, it. But, sir, there's if a... you look, excuse me, Chris, if you look at your voter rolls, you will see millions of people that are registered to vote. Millions. This isn't coming from me. This is coming from Pew Report and other places. Millions of people that are registered to vote <clears throat> that shouldn't be registered to vote. So. Let me just give you one other thing. So I talk about the corrupt media. I talk about the millions of people. I'll tell you one other thing. She shouldn't be allowed to run. It's it's, she's, she's guilty of a very, very serious crime. She should not be allowed to run. And just in that respect, I say it's rigged. Because she but, should but never, Chris, she should never have been allowed to run for the presidency based on what she did with emails and so many other but, things. But, sir, there is a tradition in this country, in fact, one of the prides of this country, is the peaceful transition of power and that no matter how hard fought a campaign is, that at the end of the campaign, that the loser concedes to the winner, not saying that you're necessarily going to be the loser or the winner, but that the loser concedes to the winner and that the country comes together in part for the good of the country. Are you saying you're not prepared now to commit to that principle? What I'm saying is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. Well, okay? Chris, let me respond to that because that's horrifying. You know, every time Donald thinks things are not going in his direction, he claims whatever it is is rigged against him. Uh, the FBI conducted a year-long investigation into my emails. They concluded there was no case. He said the FBI was rigged. He lost the Iowa caucus. He lost the Wisconsin primary. He said the Republican primary was rigged against him. Then Trump University gets sued for fraud and racketeering. He claims the court system and the federal judge is rigged against him. Uh, there was even a time when he didn't get an Emmy for his TV program three years in a row, and he started tweeting that the Emmys were rigged against Should have gotten it. This, this is a mindset. This is, this is how Donald thinks. And it's funny, but it's also really troubling. Okay. Now, that is not the way our democracy works. We've been around for 240 years. We've had free and fair elections. We've accepted the outcomes when we may not have liked them. And that is what must be expected of anyone standing on a debate stage during a general election. You know, President Obama said the other day, when you're whining before hold, hold, the game on, is folks. even hold on, finished, folks. it just shows... You, you're not up to doing the job. And let's, you know, let's be clear about what he is saying and what that means. He is denigrating, he's talking down our democracy. And I, for one, am appalled that somebody who is the nominee of one of our two major parties would take that kind of position. I think what the FBI did and what the Department of Justice did, including meeting with her husband, the Attorney General, in the back of an airplane on the tarmac in Arizona, I think it's disgraceful. I think it's a disgrace. All right. I think we've never had a situation right. hold, so bad. Hold on, in this folks. This, this doesn't do any good for anyone. Let's please continue the debate and let's move on.